I don't know what I want to do, but I'm bored. I got the youth. What do you have? Chester Lee Montalvo, go vote. All right, Marauder Gang, we've been relegated to the basement for this recording. Uh, simply because I fucking felt like it. Which is totally fine, because I just remembered that I had this skateboard down here that I could ride as I record this. I, I bought this whole revive board, deck, trucks, bearings, everything, these pebble suck shits. Got the four sticker on there. I thought I was going to be a skater when I was like 10 years old, so I watched that motherfucker. His name's like Andy Schrock or some shit like that. Um, You know, that white guy that kind of looks like a bird a little bit. But I rode this motherfucker for like a day, and then I never ended up riding it again because it was just a little too difficult for me. Watch me pop this deck up. Hold on. Wait. Damn, you saw that shit? That shit was crazy. So what was the meaning of this video? Oh, God. Fuck. Okay. So why am I recording this video for you guys? Let me get off the skateboard so I don't bust my ass. I want to tell you guys the story of the first time I really got absolutely hammered. And it was a very, it's a very recent story. In fact, it happened on Christmas 2023. So I left my house at around 10 because I wanted to get to New York by like mid to late afternoon-ish. Because I wanted to get there for when the festivities start. So something that I should touch on before we start is my whole family celebrates Christmas in New York. So basically, we all go to my aunt's house and gather. And I was the last one to the party. So I had to rush to get there, kind of. So I left at 10. Because I wanted to get there like mid to late afternoon-ish. Because that's when the festivities were starting. So I got there. Well, actually, let me just get into how much of a fucking demon i am and in, in the timing that i'm on when it comes to driving places i got from boston massachusetts a little bit out of boston massachusetts like 15 minutes out of boston massachusetts to new york city crossing the throg's neck bridge in two hours and 45 minutes now granted the roads were completely fucking empty <clears throat> because it was christmas day so that adds to it but you do the math and you'll figure out that i don't fuck around when i'm driving because i got from boston to new york in two hours 45 minutes you know how they say like when you smoke a cigarette it takes seven days off your life when you're matt marauder and you take the key of sportage for a drive i probably take three years off of it every time just because i drive it like a fucking bat out of hell so i got there i said hi to everyone and we waited like two to three hours for the rest of my family to show up because that's when the real festivity started and we start that's when we start eating drinking all that shit and i wasn't hungry at the time at least I didn't feel hungry, but my body needed food, but I didn't really feel hungry. Like, I didn't want to eat. So I didn't end up eating for, like, the whole day, basically. And then my family got there, and I had no premeditated thoughts of drinking alcohol when I got there because I never drink. In high school, I wasn't the person that was out partying and drinking. And even in college, when I went there for a semester, I barely went out and drank or anything like that. I'm just not a drinking type of guy. I've only been drunk a handful of times, maybe three times twice in canada and once is what i'm about to tell you which was probably one of the worst and most embarrassing days of my life and then i remembered that i'm 20 years old and when i'm with my family they allow me to like drink with them so i was like fuck it they they were pouring uh vodka and cranberry juices and i like my drink sweet so i was fucking with it they were pouring them and i was like talking to my cousins and my brother my cousin and my brothers are going to be pretty big characters in this story so i'm going to be mentioning them a lot so just be ready for that my uncle steve started pouring vodka cranberries and I was like, fuck it, let me get in there. I was on an empty stomach too for this whole entire uh, tenure of me getting absolutely plastered off my face. No food in my stomach. So I, I had I drank, was drinking one and I don't really know like what being drunk feels like. Like I said, I've barely ever been drunk. So I was just kind of waiting for the effects to kick in. So I'm sipping through my first one. I finish it and they were just like a red Solo cup size. So like nothing too crazy. And after just one, as you would expect from someone that doesn't drink, I started feeling... I'm just going to explain it because I'm going to explain it how I was feeling because I've never really been drunk before. I was feeling good. Like I felt, I didn't feel like dizzy or wobbly or anything like that, but I just felt like I was sitting down and I felt good. Like my body just felt good. There was, it was kind of like it numbed me a little bit. Like, and also I was feeling happy and like way more social than I normally feel. Like I'm a pretty social guy most of the times, sometimes not, but I felt like I could just talk anyone's ear off for hours and I never feel like that. I'm not like the most talkative. And this is the classic trope. I was like, well, this feels good. So why don't I just keep pounding them and see how good I can make this feeling? I was like, fuck it. Let me just drink more. Let me just keep putting these down. And maybe I'll be able to fucking talk to a brick wall for three hours and have an entertaining conversation. So I kept going to the kitchen and I ended up uh, pounding three down. And by that time, I was just conversating with my cousins because they're car guys, just like I'm a car guy. We were talking about cars. My cousin was looking into GR86s, so I was telling them about it. I was telling them about how I'm in the financial gutter because I made this stupid decision, but how the car absolutely rips. So basically what I've been telling you guys is what I told them. And I was just so, I was like drunk, like, like buzz, like tipsy. And I was just so happy to be having this conversation with my cousins. Like everything just felt so good. I don't, like, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I, I know a, a probably majority of the 
10 people that are watching this have been drunk before, it's a good feeling at the beginning. So five, six o'clock rolls around, and in about a half hour, we're going to be eating that whole Italian dinner with the fucking managotta, the lasagna, the ricotta cheese, the mozzarella, the meatballs, the sausage, you know what I'm saying? And I'm excited for dinner. I hadn't eaten all day, but I ended up, before dinner, having another two uh, vodka cranberries. So I was up to five now at this point. Uh, on an empty stomach, I didn't even eat, like, my cousin, by the way, my cousin, Joe, kept saying to me, on a, you're going to like end up, this is going to get really bad if you don't eat something. Like My cousins and my brothers were like trying to force feed me stuff. And all I ended up really eating was I had some little balls of mo mozzarella. And I had a few fucking Triscuits with cheese on it and some shrimp cocktail. And that's really all I had. Shrimp cocktail in an empty stomach is like, that's a fucking sin. That's so disgusting. But that's what I did because I was drunk out of my fucking face. I'm a big guy. You guys know my dims. I'm fucking six foot four, 210 pounds when I wake up in the morning after my shit. I'm still 210 pounds. So basically, I wake up at 220 and then I shit and I'm 210 fasted. So you guys know that if you're a dedicated washer. So it takes more than a few pieces of shrimp and some mozzarella to really fill me up. So I was still basically starved at that point. So after my fifth drink. We have this thing that we do as a family where one person gives another person a recipient gift. And then the next year, another that person that got the recipient gift gives it to another person. So, for example, my cousin Joe gave me the recipient gift, Matt Marauder. And this year, Matt Marauder was giving his recipient gift to his other cousin who had just given birth. So that's part of the story where things get a little bad because I was just plastered out of my fucking gourd, dude. And I was sitting on the stairs talking to my brother, telling him about how sick I felt and how disgusting I felt. Dude, I just wanted to close my eyes and just forget about everything. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Dude, it was opposite ends of the spectrum. One drink, I felt like talking to everybody. I felt like talking to a wall. Everything. Five drinks, I just wanted to commit. Like I wanted, in my head, I was like, how am I ever going to eat food again? Because my appetite was zero. So I was like, how the fuck am I even going to have dinner at this point? Because I'm just going to end up yuking all over the fucking table and on top of that i have to focus on giving this fucking recipient gift to a lady that just gave birth and it's supposed to be like a heartfelt thing so with my the help of my cousin's guidance i end up stumbling my way through the speech for this recipient and ultimately i give the gift and it kind of goes it, everyone knew i was fucking hammered at that point so they gave me the benefit of the doubt but i didn't do that bad on that i was more worried about dinner to be honest because after i gave the recipient gift that's when the sickness really started kicking in, boys. I felt so bad. My stomach, it wasn't even really my stomach. It was just my head was pounding. I felt like every move I made, there was a chance that I was going to, like a fucking fire hose, like blow someone's fucking skin off their face with just like vodka, cranberry, and shrimp fucking pulse right at his fucking head does that make sense that's when it was the throwing up was all kind of funny business at that point like it wasn't a real thing and then i was like hold on i gotta fucking hit the bathroom so i go to my cousin joe i tap him i'm like it's happening i'm going to the bathroom he's like i fucking told you this was gonna happen and at that point i didn't want to hear it so i just skedaddled up the fucking stairs and went to the upstairs bathroom where i've been known to unleash i'm on my fucking knees in front of the toilet with basically my whole head in the bowl because at that point i didn't care about cleanliness at all if i was like sober he, uh, my head isn't getting within three feet of that fucking the the toilet but because i'm hammered and i feel like i'm dying my head's in the toilet basically and i'm kind of good and i'm in there for like 20 minutes because i don't want to like see anyone like i don't want anything so i'm just better off in there not moving head in the toilet all of a sudden i get a knock on the door dun 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 it sounded just like this i'm gonna get pta fucking whatever the fuck post-traumatic from that shit My cousin Joe goes, I, Matt, are you good in there? Like, what's going on? Get me updated. What's going on? I'm like, dude, I don't feel so fucking good. That's basically what I said. I don't know exactly what I said. It's kind of a blur. I'm trying to block it out. <clears throat> and he opens the door to crack to get a look at me. And I'm standing up at this point, like ready to like talk to him and tell him how, how I'm feeling. And at this point, dinner's almost ready. So when he opens the door, just like this, like, just like, you know how in the cartoons, the fucking smell travels? 
the fucking smell was going like this from the kitchen all the way down. There's a big ass hallway. It's like a 20 foot hallway. So the smell is just coming, coming, coming. And where can we find something that would represent my nostrils? Boom. These represent my nostrils perfectly. The smells like this. I'm telling Joe about how I'm about to literally blow a fucking hole like I'm Godzilla. Blowing a fucking hole with my plasma beam in the middle of the earth with my vomit. And I'm here, here, here. And the smell goes like this to my nostrils. And it fucking goes in. And when I catch a whiff of that red sauce, guys, it's immediate propulsion system coming up my fucking stomach through my throat and out of my mouth. I throw up four times in a row. I've never thrown up four times in a row in my life, dude. I had like 110 fever once and I didn't throw up four times in a row. It, there, it, I didn't know how I had that much stuff in me. I'm looking forward to this dinner to have this Italian feast and really embrace my fifth generation Italian roots. But I couldn't because for the whole dinner, I laid on my cousin Joe's bed in the fucking fetal position on my side, not even sleeping, but just like kind of praying to Allah that the fucking pain would go away. And eventually it kind of waned. I had a nature valley bar that my cousin gave me and the pain kind of subsided a little bit and I started feeling better. And I ended up pulling myself out and sitting at the table to play some left, right, center and play some five second rule and shit like that. And... We ended the night strong. I actually ended up playing some Jackbox TV games for like three hours with them. And it all ended kind of good. But boy, that was probably top three most embarrassing and most brutal things that has ever happened to me in my life. Just because it was right in front of my whole family, not just my immediate, my whole family. Just getting absolutely shit faced and throwing up everywhere. And I didn't get to eat the big Italian feast. So two L's from that Marauder, but maybe it'll make a good video. Do a roll, do a roll. Oh shit. Don't break it. Uh, why is it turning more? Because it's made of wood. Why is it turning more? <laughs> it's made of balsam.